My name is Kevin Robert Dean, D-E-A-N. Mm -hmm. And your, could you spell it? D-E-A-N. And tell me, what is your birthday? 17th of December, 1933. So how old are you now? 85. Wow. You look great. <laughs> Thank you. Where were you born? Tumut, New South Wales. Could T you spell it? T-U-M-U-T. T-U-M-U-T. Same way, yes. Yeah. Spell it either way, same way. And where is it? Close to where? Big city, like? Uh, Sydney. Sydney? Mm. Okay. Tell me about your family when you were growing up. Your parents and your siblings. Well, I, I'm, uh, I'm the third eldest of, four, of 12 children. Uh -huh. uh, and two, two of uh, my elder sister, my brother after me, are both deceased. Uh, we, were, we went from Tumut to Harden, and my father went off to war. We were in Yass, New South Wales. He never went overseas. In fact, he, was a, he, was a, he wasn't a good soldier. And then he decided he would take the ten children mm. to Gladstone, Queensland, by train, to go to Curtis Island on a cattle station. Cattle station? What for, I will not know. Mm. And, and uh, then he said, that when I was 13, he said, I've got a job for you, you'll go to Mount Larko on a cattle station. Huh? I couldn't ride a horse, I didn't know what a cow was or a bull was, or anything like that. But I'll soon learn. A stock whip makes a big difference across your back. They weren't very good in those days. We had a pretty rough life, actually, when you're 13 and you're on your own and you're working. And then I was doing national service in those days. Mm -hmm. So I got a six months deferment from national service. I went to Rockhampton and, and joined the army. When was it? Uh, I, I, I got no idea. Um, I think it'll be about a April uh, 1952. Mm -hmm. uh, and you joined the army, right? I joined the army, but then I had to go from Gladstone to Brisbane mm. to go to the Northern Command Personnel Depot to be accepted into the army. Mm -hmm. And I've uh, been 13 with little education. The reason why we got in the army is because of the Korean War because they want infantry soldiers. And we did not know anything about Korea. <laughs> now, that's a question, as a bloke said a while ago, no. We might have seen a flash on newsreel, just a flash. Because, see, we didn't have this. Mm -hmm. We didn't have papers. We didn't have radios. Didn't you all right? Yeah. And all, all that sort of thing, we didn't know. I joined the army and I did my recruit training in Nogra, in Brisbane. And then we went to Ingleburn. And they said, uh, May 1953, you're going to Japan. Hmm. Didn't say where we were going. We knew then, then we knew where we were. It took three days to get to Japan in those days. Three days on the plane. And then we got to Japan and we went to Hiro. Reinforcement deadline. Then we had a Haramural Battle School. Then there was eight of us picked to go to the Kure Military Hospital to become rifle and stretcher bearers. And I don't know why they picked me in here, 19 year old. We had two weeks training. In Japan? In Japan at Kure Hospital, two weeks training as a rifle and stretcher bearer. Then I was taken straight up to the front line in Korea. So when did you leave from Japan to Korea? Uh, around about the 13th of uh, July. And I was put in the front line on the 14th of July. What, the 53? 50, uh, 52? 53. 53? Yeah. In July? In July. So there was about to, the war about to end? Yes. Wow. So That's why I say our battalion, the 2nd Battalion, North Southern. 2nd Battalion? Yeah. Was the lucky battalion. Uh huh. Anyhow, what was your company? 
Do you have any yeah, unit? I, I was in Charlie Company, 9 Platoon. Charlie Company? 9 Platoon. 9th? 9. On a, on a position called Hill 121. Hill 121, yeah. Which is part of the hook. And uh, I got introduced up to the front line by a World War II soldier. He said, keep your head down. And he said, and just walk around for a couple of days and get used to the smell of the place. But when I, was, when I arrived at uh, 2 RER, no, they met me and then put me in a tent for the night. I was on my own. Full battle gear, rifle fully loaded, hunting around ammunition. All this firing going on. And I said, what have I got myself into? I had no idea. Yeah. No idea, but we did. And uh, I think the biggest problem in, in war is you're young, you're scared, you are scared. I mean, don't have to be wrong that. But also sleep deprivation is your biggest problem. As Matt said, we've got hammered day and night. Doesn't matter what time. When 2RER first went into the line in about uh, May or April 1953, on a position called 159, the Chinese then said to them, welcome to RER, I hope you do as well as your other sister <laughs> battalions. So that was a shock to those blokes. Another good thing about 2RER is we got 500 odd blokes from 1RER, they hadn't finished their time. So they were already battle hardened. Because when you're like me, a 19 year old, five foot 10 and a bit, skinny as anything, you're green. And, uh, and, and then, of course, I had to look after the wounded. And uh, two big blues they made, they just didn't show us how to use morphine. And they didn't show us how to use, uh, uh, look after the wounded at night. It's a very hard thing. Mm -hmm. So we got, we got hit. We were doing wiring. This was before the battle, the last battle of the war. We lost three blokes there and one badly wounded. How many? Three blokes, three mm. blokes killed on the wire. They, uh, more, they got, they more to us, got us. And uh, one bloke, I, I, I dragged one bloke in, and I dragged another bloke in. He was dead. I dropped him on his feet. I didn't know they were mates. And I gave this bloke morphine, and he went, ah! And I said, shit, I've killed him. Mm. I've killed him. <laughs> Being a young man, I didn't know. Mm. In those days, we could not. We could not stretch them out. Yeah. You had to drag them out, because you can't put a stretch in a, in a trench. It's too narrow. So there, you wait to get outside, and somebody takes care of them, takes them down our remote. Our main job was to see and stop the bleeding and all that sort of thing. So it's, uh, it was a pretty horrendous thing to be in there. It was must it? be very hard for you, because your job is to carry those wounded and so on, right? Yeah. So you saw you encounter those wounded soldiers and dead soldiers all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I meet them, met them often, often, and used to talk to them, and I know them well. Some of them I still know today. They're still alive. There's not many of us left. We're on, we're, as much and I say, we're in the twilight zone. Yeah, and then, then they got into us on the, um, the 20, 24th, 20, uh, 23rd, 24th, 26th. Of July, mm -hmm. and they were firing around about 40 shells a minute on our position with machine guns and uh, mortar and artillery. And uh, in that days, we lost five killed and 27 wounded, and two catcoms were killed by shrapnel. And uh, we we really got we really were on the dirty end of the stick, and we I thought. We were ordered to fix bayonets, and, and because most most of the patrols were done at night, as Matt said. Mm. If you'd imagine being night time, and you got hit, or you something, you had to get them back. We always found our way back to the front line. I even think about today; it's amazing, you know. And I think because, like Matt said, we worked in the bush. We were bushmen, and uh, we were told. In 2003, we had a big a reunion for the, all the K veterans and marched in Brisbane. The mayor put on a, 
a do for us in the town hall. And then next day we had a big big party and all that sort of thing. So, but you, the Korean people, have made us. It's no one, not the Australians. You've got a beautiful memorial down at Cascade Gardens. Of course, of course the RSL's got the name there, the government. But you people made it, not them. It's you, the Korean people, that love us, not, not them. We're just a forgotten mob. We just ran recently to a, a dinner at the uh, um, um, Broad, uh, Broad Beach uh, 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 Bowls Club. Uh, I, I, uh, as Matt said, I went back to Korea. When? In April. April of? Uh, 17. 17. Mm -hmm. And um, I sat, we landed at Incheon. Now, when I left Korea, that makes me 20 years when I left Korea, so you know. When did you leave Korea? Um, 26th of June, 1954. I'm sorry? 26th of June, 1954. Mm -hmm. I went to Japan on guard duty for a long time and then went back to Australia. So when you went back to Korea in 2017... It was mind-boggling. Tell me. <clears throat> You've got no idea. Matt, Matt's been happy for years to go, and, I, and I, I finally went. Tell me. What did you see? What's, what's been... What different? I remembered from, from when I was left there 20 years, like Matt said, that everything was smashed to bits, bodies everywhere. And to walk in Incheon, which was then MacArthur's big do at, in, in the Korean War, to find an airport there, a city. Then you walk in and you see Seoul, the city, beautiful. And then you go to Pusan, you call Pusan, we call Pusan, you call Pusan now. Same as you've got Capion, you've got a different name of Capion. You know, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. All these bridges and things like this. And you people paid 50% of my airfare. 30% for my son, you know, and we had three uh, five-star accommodation. Everything was free. It was only five days. I cursed myself all the way because I was too old. It was, it was really on. But we were well looked after. We were, we were, I couldn't get over it. I will never get over it, seeing people like that. They're the only country in the world that think people like us. France does, I'm sorry for the worst of the war. You people, you're bloody marvellous. You are. And when I can't you, thank you enough. Sure. I mean, you fought for us. And now no, we, you we, your we want to thank back to you. Yes. That's the way I feel. To so go back after your 20 years of age and see what you've done. And to be told that you went broke one part of it. Everybody put their gold and everything in the bank and brought you out of it. And you never look back since. I drive a uh, Tucson Hyundai. Yeah. Matt, Matt's got top of the range Hyundai. We drive all that. You know, it's, I, I just can't get over the, the generosity of use. We arrive there, it costs us nothing. Even to go to Tucson, we, we had nothing. You know, and you see it all changed, everything's changed. The retirement, the uh, village that Matt was talking about is all done up. It's all there. I, I don't, uh, to me, you were so generous. And then Sewell's got the best war memorial I've seen. I've been there. And uh, it was my son, and we were there. And uh, I said, geez, look at this. I, I couldn't believe it. Then we went into a room, and there's our war. You've got everything in there. Everything but the kitchen sink. <laughs> oh, it, 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 it is. I, I can't explain. But I got off the, I got off the plane at Inchon. And uh, give uh, Korean Airlines a, a down like that. Because I had to sit on a board like that table for 10 hours. Oh. So our bum was very sore. Anyhow, I was, got off at Inchon and I looked behind me and there was an Australian major. Always look at the chest, he had two rounds or three rounds of ribbons. And he caught up with me. I said, he said, G'day, Kevin D. <laughs> and I, I stopped. How did you know me? He said, you're more famous than you think you are. Said, See, I spent, th Matt and I spent over 70 years looking after veterans and widows. Mm. Anyhow, he said, would you do me a favour? And I said, what, what do you want, sir? And he said, um, would you read the excerpt out of the Bible? 
on Anzac Day at the memorial, War Memorial. I said, uh, no, I'm a heathen. Oh. Took, took him back. No, I went back to him and said, no, I'll be on it. Uh, I did. I did that. It, I just couldn't get over it. Matt told me all about career and I sort of went through and here. But when you go there and you've been there. When you left Korea, had you ever thought that Korea would become like this today? No. Did not, you, in, not in that time. Did you underestimate Korean people? Well, I've never seen much of them. Mm. So you couldn't, you, the only ones we've seen was the catcoms. But we did have a, a soldier with us. He, they went out on patrol near 159. And this bloke from 2RER and this uh, Korean soldier disappeared. Never found him. They won the MIAs. So, uh, yeah, it, 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 that, we went out to Pusan and looked at the cemetery. I couldn't take that, I broke down. My son grabbed me, he took us out. But no, I, you could never imagine the city in, what's that, 60, 67 years mm. come like you people have done. Full marks to us. And, uh, and you're full marks from, from us veterans of the Forgotten War. Because without you, we would have nothing. So don't you think that we have to be able to teach about the war that you fought for with a successful outcome to our young generation here in Australia? Yes. It's got to be done. Got to be done. It's got to be done because yeah. no one knows anything about it. Very few people don't. It's all, as, as, as was mentioned before, it's all Vietnam. When, when the, when the uh, truce was signed, I was there. And How was it? Tell me, the, oh, do you, do you rec you've got remember no that? <laughs> we were getting how we, we were in for it. Like the Duke of Wellington just got done <laughs> very bad. And I thought, we're not going to live through this. We're going to die. Oh. And uh, suddenly, uh, they didn't tell us. We had an idea it was on. They were frightened we wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't put the effort in. And, they, and I said, all right. But, but they were giving us shells and we were giving them shells. So the Kiwis and the Americans into them, stopped them from coming because we're, we were Hill 121, the Marines were next to us on Hill 111 and we had a contact bunker, six blokes. They fought for three days in that bunker and uh, the Marines blew, blew, blew through and left our machine gunners on 12 blokes on top of the hill. And uh, then they came back and retook the hill, but our bloke stayed there. And Cooper, this 19-year-old sergeant, he said to the blokes, get down the trenches, stay down. I'm calling the artillery down on me. So he did. And then the blokes in the bunker the same. He, uh, the corporal there, he ran through the shell fire to the marine radio shack, let us know what was going on. And uh, he, got, and he came back. He never got hit. <laughs> He's a, he was a rat for World War II, but never went outside of Australia. And uh, it, it just marvellous. But when it, when, it, when, it was, when it was all over, the killing stopped. I just got out on my knees and I said, thank you, I survived. Mm. Then, the morning we saw <clears> two. <throat> Usually we do, just, on, just, just before, fairly early, for about five in the morning. And the stench was terrible. And uh, in the daybreak, there was thousands of dead Chinese, all stages of decomposition to, to the early stages of death. And I just sat there and I was, I was mind boggled. So we went up there and we saw a couple of Chinese. You know, they were, were delousing a mine. They had a mine under our position on the old one to one. If the war would have went on, they would have, like World War I, they would have just went woof. Most of us would have been gone. Mm. Uh, they were determined because, see, the uh, 121 and Hill 111, where that bunker was, was a road to Seoul. They could go straight through to Seoul. Mm. They stopped them. So the hill that you uh, mostly were stationing was Hill 121. Any other episode that you remember about uh, the last battle of Hook? No, just the relief to get out that it was all over and I survived as a 19-year-old because I left Korea then six foot and 11 stone. 
so I grew up when I was there. Mm. No, not really. Uh, I think uh, most of our dead and wounded were gone because we kept our place clean. We never kept it dirty. And uh, no, I, it, it was just the utter relief to think that I survived or how we survived. Mm -hmm. That's why we call ourselves the Lucky Battalion because that war would have went on. We'd have lost, we'd have lost ourselves. Because the Duke of Wellington's got a terrible hiding there. There are only young kids from uh, British National Service. One thing you remark about the British, when uh, 1950, when 3 hour went in there, the British refused to decorate us. Why? Because there wasn't enough men in the field. Hmm. You got out. So anyhow, they brought everybody in, they could, as to say, and they end up giving them. But there was no VCs one. Three DCMs, one, one George Cross. They're all military medals. They wouldn't decorate us. So if you did something brave, you got a military medal, you died, you got an invite mentioned in dispatches. So the British were very bad on us. Mm. They did the same thing in Malaya too, when we were in Malaya. Mm. That broke us. We were really, when Malaya finished after two years, we were gone. Mm. We, we were full of PTSD and anxiety and all this. You have a PTSD too? What is the symptom? Oh, you, 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 you talk too much, uh, you say things you shouldn't say, and you do things you shouldn't do. And, 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 but as you get older, and uh, I had a brain tumour removed, changed your personality a bit, and it, 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 just, it just changed. But I had a wonderful wife, mm. and that's the beauty. She stuck by me. How? I will never. <laughs> I don't know, 52 and a half years before after she passed away. Great. But oh, passed away? Passed away, yes. She passed away yeah. when? Uh, January 2011. Oh, it's been a little while. Yeah. Oh. It's still there. I'm you miss sorry. Them, you miss them terribly. Yeah. You miss them because you're, they're, they're your mate. Like I, she had a hard time with me. It wasn't easy. War affects you terribly. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are or what you are. If, if you're in the actual infantry side, like Matt and I, you're in it. Mm. Don't forget those blokes. We went out on patrols in, on the hook with all automatic weapons. We never took rifles, sewing guns and, and Bren guns. The Chinese didn't like us because we are too, too vicious. Because we took over from the French or the Americans we had to fight for well, Canadians, we had to fight for that land, but they wouldn't patrol like we do. So we're very vicious. Would you shake hands if I arranged a meeting with a Chinese soldier who fought against you at the time? No, certainly. I've got nothing against them. They did a job, we did a job. Nothing against them. Because mm -hmm. I was uh, examining uh, the Repat Hospital, and he was a, 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 a well, anyhow, he's checking from the prostrate. And he was Chinese, elderly Chinese, and he said, you're in Korea. I said, yeah. Well, who are you fighting in Korea? I said, Chinese. You're Malaya. I said, yeah. Who are you fighting, Chinese? And he started to get off his chair a bit. I said, calm down, mate. It's all over. I said, you weren't there. You're an Australian. I said, even if one walked in today, I'd say, good day to them, I wouldn't. Because most of them are dead now. Don't forget, they were old soldiers. But most of the Chinese were those that had that big, big push to get Ken Chai Jack out of the place. So that was it. And what you must remember also that a lot of Australians were World War II blokes, but the Americans were all World War II. Those Marines at the Chelsea and Roosevelt, they were all World War II. There's a uh, thing on Netflix, and Netflix about the chosen. Mm -hmm. I was very, we were very lucky that we weren't in the front line during winter. We were in a peace camp and to keep ourselves warm like Mac did we had a chuffer. It's fed and kept us warm. We ended up with a dark ring around your neck in the morning, mm. but you're warm. 
What is Korea to you? You told me you didn't know anything about Korea. You fought for uh, the last battle of the hook. You encountered so many wounded and dead soldiers. You came back in one piece, luckily, and you've been back to Korea and you saw all these changes. What is Korea to you now personally? Me, beautiful place. One of the best places I've ever been to. I've never, you can't describe it. You could treat it as a hero. And this doesn't lay too good with an infantry soldier. We're not heroes. We're just doing a job that we were trained to do. But you people are absolutely marvellous. Mm. To me, I'll never forget my tour to Korea. I don't think I'll ever go back. I'd like to, but I'm too old. And I hope that I can reach out to the history teachers here in Australia so that we can share this interview with them so that they can teach in the yeah. classroom about yeah. the war that you fought for with the clear outcome. Yeah, 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 because it was all over, you know, and then we went up to the Kansas line. We, 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 we did the Kansas line. That was about in case the Chinese had another go. Mm -hmm. But they were finished and we were finished. So, but the sight I saw after the 28th of July six in my memory for the rest of my life. It's a lot of men, a lot of waste of human life. What would you say to the people who doesn't know really about this uh, legacy of the Korean War? What would you say to them? Stupid. <laughs> Other than that, what would you say to them? Read a book. Get a book. Read it. Plenty around. Read about something. But just explain it. What is the legacy you think that they need to know? Well, they need to know what we did, not only us, but the other nations, and what casualties we suffered, and, what, and also the food, the climate. You've got a funny climate, you people. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> it rained, then when it snowed and we are at the Kansas line, we got uh, sheets of uh, galvanised tin, Turn it up and have kids down the side of the hill on the snow. It's a white Christmas for us. That sort of thing. You mm. see, so it's it's Korea. I, I would never Matt talk, talk, to talk, to talk. I didn't. I, I believed him. But you've got to go there and experience. The experience is exhilarating. To know mm -hmm. that people love you that much for what you've done. And we think nothing of it. We just went over and did a job. We, we were trained to, to do it, and, and, and I didn't. Uh, so I didn't volunteer to go to Korea. I, I was I was a regular army soldier, and they just put us on a plane and took us there. That was it. Simple as that. I wanted to be an engineer, drive bulldozers and trucks and that. But they said, "No, you're going." <laughs> Any episode that you didn't share with me so far, you haven't shared? No, not really. No, I, I think it covers about a lot. And uh, I've done a lot of interviews in my time. And uh, I did it with Richard Weidler. I think he got a bloke here today who's only got one leg. I think he might be a gunner from, the, uh, from uh, New Zealand. He lost his leg in Korea. I was the Australians a lot. They carried him out. He's very good. I think he got a Mr. Pooley for one RAR. Yeah, he was with me. The three of us were with Richard Weidler on the ABC talking about the Korean War. He talked about it. And I gave him a book about the Korean War. It's, it's for people to know what we did. Not only what, what they did in Vietnam and Second World War, the Americans are, uh, are a funny mob, but what, what did the, we, the, we can't understand why they left the 111. Left our blokes there, three fix of machine gun. But that's a lot of, bit of puzzle. I think they lost nearly 100 dead when they took them on every shelf. But you've got to admire the Australian soldier. He's a, he's a good soldier. I'm not saying that because I'm one of them. They are good. Mateship. Got to stick with it. Yes. We love you people now. Yeah. More. More and more. Like when you, you say to us, oh, come on, 
come down, come down to the to the uh, bowls club and have lunch with us. You know, all this sort of thing. It means a lot to us. It's 27 July. I got our RSL at my sub branch at Corinda to do a thing on the Korean War. And he did a, a TV program on the Korean War. Mm -hmm. And he had the, the uh, photographic place of the Korean War, the hill and everything else, of the hook. You knew where you were, we never knew. You, all you can see was with your eyes and with your ears. I've, I've written there, I've got things here that was written in the paper surviving the hell of the hook and relief from pure joy. Show that to the camera, up to your chin. Can I get it? I'll, I'll tear it off. It's okay. Just, just show it like that, yes. Bring it up to your... Yes. Great. Yeah. So, what is about it? Your fingers are covering. Oh, I'm sorry. I, what I is apologize. It? That. The Good. surviving hell on the hook brings relief and pure joy. Yep. And that's you are there? Yeah, that's me. Standing? Yeah, that's me. Beautiful, handsome young boy. Yeah, uh, young boy. 20 years of age. Yo. You were there? Get it again, though? Mm hmm. I got it. Thank you. So let's wrap this up. Any other, any other things that you want to show? Well, I did a. That's me with my son. Where? This is in Canberra for the 60th anniversary of the, of the Korean War. Yeah, show that too. Yes, my son. You want it that way or the other way? Which way? Any fingers anyway? Nope. Your son, big. He's bigger than I am. Oh. <laughs> and yeah. is he, has, has he been in Korea? Yes, he Korea? was with me. Ah, you... Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy, he's a psychiatric nurse, he thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm. I broke down in Korea and mm. he, he said, hey, don't be silly, Dad, you know what you're here for? When I was doing this, this here, I had Japanese come up to me and, yeah. I, and said, what money are these medals? I said, they're not. So I told them. Yeah, we did a few of these and these things sort of come, come here. But that was done when I was entered the retirement village. That one's so wet. So done with it. That's my life story. Any other story that you haven't told me? Uh, not really. See, this is uh, about the Korean War. Mm. You think I survived, but you were only a little boy and very frightened little boy at that. Well, David 55, we were in Malaya, which we did in. That's it. What Anzac Day means. Oh, that's just relevant. That's right, so Matthew? I mean, Kevin, I'm sorry. Oh, you're right. Kevin. Mate. You're right. I want to thank you for your fight again for the people in Korea. And we are doing this to preserve your memory and honor your service. But at the same time, we're going to use it for the classroom education on the history, the legacy of the Korean War that you witnessed, 1950 and now, okay? You are a permanent friend of Korean people. Oh, yeah. And it's a great honor and, and pleasure to meet you. Thank you. And a great honor for you to do this for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.